Hey guys and girls, it's me Subdaya Rocket and today we're going to be reviewing Looney Tunes back in action. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I thought we were done with Space Jam. No, Lena, this is for James Bond. Huh? How? Well, if you look at the cast list here, you'll notice there's somebody there named Timothy Dalton. And if you're a James Bond fan out there, doesn't that sound familiar to you? Oh! Yeah, so without further ado, let's get into it! Of course, a lot of you may know about the 1996 film Space Jam, but you might be wondering to yourself, why did it took so long for them to make some sort of follow-up? Of course, it was a big success back in 1996, so why didn't they do some kind of follow-up in 1998 or something like that? Well, the thing is, they wanted to, but unfortunately, Michael Jordan just said, no. And with that little statement from Michael Jordan in mind, Wonder Brothers frantically searched for a different idea to follow up from the original Space Jam. They went through different projects, one being cancelled after the other, and then finally, one project was able to survive, that being Looney Tunes back in action in 2003. And at that point, Wonder Brothers was probably just like, <sighs> whatever, just good enough, I guess. So yeah, but uh, of course this isn't really focusing on the Looney Tunes meeting up with a famous sports star this time, so what is this movie about? So basically Daffy Duck is kind of tired of the whole stick of him being the butt of every joke that Bugs Bunny makes, so uh, he decided to argue a bit with the Warner Brothers executive, which kind of led to him being kicked out from Warner Brothers completely, which led to him and later on Bugs Bunny going on this big epic spy thriller quest to save the world and conveniently stop a bunch of their previous bad guys from the Looney Tunes cartoons. I kind of feel like this could have been a really fun little plot for the Looney Tunes, but unfortunately they never really dive that much into Daffy's little story here. They kind of focus more on the spy stuff because that's where all the human characters come in because they're more involved into that part of the story. And yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because I kind of feel like they could have done much more with that story with Daffy Duck because it technically, you know, it's kind of true that Daffy Duck might be tired of this whole shtick because he, especially since he used to be like the big main star of the Looney Tunes, but then, you know, Bugs Bunny came along and kind of stole a lot of the spotlight from him, both in the context of the cartoons and in real life. So I thought it'd be fun to delve into that, especially since this is a live action cartoon hybrid movie. Maybe they could use the human characters to interact with Daffy Duck in a way that maybe Daffy Duck realized that people really like Daffy Duck now for being, you know, the butt of Bugs Bunny's joke. That's what makes him so popular because it's this little saying that some people usually say, I don't know how common this is because I keep seeing this in a lot of history of the Looney Tunes, like, you know, basically that, you know, Daffy Duck, I mean, Bugs Bunny is who we want to be and Daffy Duck is who we are. So I kind of feel like maybe they could have that mentality into this movie which would have been really fun and really nice to see. I mean, yeah, sure, it's Looney Tunes. It's usually more of the wacky stuff, nothing more, I guess you can say, serious that they should do, but I'm sure this isn't that serious. I kind of feel like they could have done that, so yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. I really don't think all of us are like Daffy Duck. I mean, come on, Lena, I kind of feel like there is some sort of Daffy Duck within all of us. No, I, I refuse to believe that's what we are. I believe we're all great and awesome and perfect and there's nothing wrong with us, okay? There's nothing absolutely wrong with us. I'll be in the kitchen. Another thing to take note about this movie is that uh, even though I know a lot of people love Bugs and Daffy, I hope you aren't really big fans of the other Looney Tunes because uh, the rest of the Looney Tunes are just kind of regulated to cameos in this. Like seriously, I kind of feel like if you compile all the scenes involving Roadrunner in this movie, the video will only last like about 4 seconds. Seriously. Hi! Oh look, it's Agent 0003 from the latest Super Day Rocket special. How are you doing? Bye, just here for a quick checkup. Oh, um, he's gone. Uh, okay then. And the Looney Tunes problems don't really stop there because I haven't even talked about the animation in this film. I kind of feel like it has a bit of a downgrade from the original Space Jam movie, surprisingly, despite it being 
years after that movie. I mean, the animation is very clean and smooth, but the main problem here is it kind of feels like they're not really in the scene that they are in. It kind of feels like it just slapped on there, like it's, you know, a little picture they put on Photoshop and just, you know, put it on there. I know that doesn't make much sense. <clears throat> Andrew Garfield. <clears throat> But still, um, yeah, I feel like you know what I mean when you see just one picture of the Looney Tunes in the live action scene. Look, I know I've been criticizing a lot about the Looney Tunes in this movie, but there is some kind of improvement in this movie when it compares to, you know, the original Space Jam. And that's the Looney Tunes nature, which I mentioned before in my Space Jam review, where I kind of feel like they did manage to implement the same nature from the original cartoons where, you know, they have some kind of funny build up to, you know, the big punchline, unlike in Space Jam where you just do the sponge, do the punchline and that's pretty much it. Although sometimes it's kind of a bit of a hit or miss situation. Sometimes it will land, sometimes it won't really land. Like um, this one part with the uh, coyote trying to shoot a missile at Bugs and Daffy and then it just suddenly goes back to him. I mean, it would be funny and more like the Looney Tunes if we actually see how the missile goes back to coyote, but no, it just goes back to him without any explanation. Funny? And another thing you might be noticing from this review is that I don't really talk about the humans that much in this. I've been focusing a lot on the Looney Tunes because, well, there really isn't that much to talk about with the human characters. I know they're trying to focus more on that story with a little spy thriller with um, this guy named Damien, Jake, Damien Drake Jr. trying to, you know, save his father, Damien Drake, being played by Timothy Dalton. And because, uh, you know, he's a, actually a super spy and all that, but uh, they don't really do much with it. It just kind of feels like a generic spy story, which is a bit weird because you have somebody like Timothy Dalton who has experience with, you know, James Bond and all that. You think you want to do some kind of fun parodies with James Bond. I know Wonder Brothers don't own James Bond, but they had, a talk, they had an opportunity there, but they didn't really use that much. So, yeah, it's a bit... It's a bit odd. So yeah, in a lot of ways, this movie is kind of underwhelming, which I guess I can understand because uh, I did hear there were a lot of troubles during production. I mean, plus there was even a big deleted scene, which is supposed to be the ending that they already shot, but they have to change it. I mean, I guess it makes sense since, you know, the original ending was just like, <laughs> I finally got the old powerful tissue box. Not so fast. <laughs> So yeah, I'm glad they changed that, but still there were a lot of troubles during production, which is a bit of shame because I kind of feel like there were a lot of great ideas with this movie with in terms of, you know, the Daffy Duck story and it could have done a lot of fun things with the whole spy thriller story they have here with, you know, Timmy Dalton and all that. So if they push a lot more harder with this movie and, you know, they have a lot less of those production troubles, I kind of feel like we have a great Looney Tunes live action movie, probably even better than Space Jam or even the, you know, the new Space Jam that we got just recently. So yeah, but at last, this is what we got. At least it's a fun little kids movie that you can watch from time to time. Even I watch it from time to time whenever it pops up on Warner Brothers TV. But yeah, it just makes me one thing more. And uh, let's hope we get to see more of that whenever they try to do some kind of attempt with the Looney Tunes, focusing more on them rather than just them with a sports star. Who knows, maybe we'll get it. I'm sure with the success of Space Jam 2, they're probably thinking of something like that. I know we have the Coyote movie coming out soon, so yeah, who knows. We might see some decent Looney Tunes live action movies coming in the near future. So here's hoping for that. So with that said, all right guys and gals, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. So until then, rock it on. Huh, that was a very short outro. Oh well. but only one of them surviving, being this movie, Looney Tunes, back in action, back in 1993. 2003. <laughs> and finally, one project was able to survive, that being Looney Tunes, back in action, in 19... Why do I keep saying 19? It's 2003. <laughs> See, please, do not say 1993. It's 2003.
It's not Sonic Spinball Year. 